this morning thinking about the reefs in Discovery Bay, Jamaica, back when we met in 1974. All that clear water, coral over the bottom, really paradise. There were so many of us studying all different kinds of questions about the reef, but we never really thought about reef conservation because we thought those reefs were indestructible. We, we basically took them for granted. Yeah, it was really magical, you know, and we were in love. And and we were going around and looking at all those beautiful places. And then the whole damn thing went to hell. But it did it so incredibly fast. I mean, we had Hurricane Allen in 1980 and we stuck half the lab in our house up the hill and we woke up the next day and the reefs were gone. But there's always been hurricanes and, and we thought we really knew how they were gonna recover, just like a forest recovers after a forest fire. And so we studied it and we predicted it and, and we published it in science and we totally blew it. We were totally wrong because what we forgot was us. We forgot how people had overfished and whatever and changed the rules of nature. And then in 83, while we were getting married in New York City, one thing after another, bad news, bad news, bad news. The sea urchins died and the seaweed grew. And the corals were dying. Before you know it, the reefs of Jamaica, where we fell in love, are just a garbage dump. It's already true in Jamaica that, that none of the fish are reproducing there. They're coming in from somewhere else. What happens when none of the places have fish that are growing long enough to reproduce? That means no fish. 2013, I went to the Philippines as a guest of the State Department. And they took me on a dive so I could go underwater. And we get underwater, and it's just devastation. Yeah, it's, everything did. The really scary thing was in 45 minutes, I didn't see one single fish. And that's where we could be going in the Caribbean if we don't do anything. And it's the same thing everywhere. We go to Panama, and it was miles and miles and miles of dead staghorn coral yeah, from disease. Yeah, come on, Dr. Doom know. and Gloom. If there's still some nice places left. Just went to one of them last year, Southern Line Islands, and we both went to the Northern Line Islands in 2005, and there you can see the bottom is covered with live coral, and in the water there are sharks and manta rays, and groupers and yeah, it's turtles, really it's, in, it's incredible. And there are places like that elsewhere. It's hard to find them in the Caribbean, and but there are, you're right, there are a few, and, and that's why we did this whole three-year study, right? The whole point of the Caribbean study is we can do something, and they're really simple. We can stop overfishing, we can start to zone the coast better, we can control our sewage, we can control our waste. These are all things that we can really do and, and do easily. We've understood this stuff for a long time. I mean, there's nothing in my report except the realization that climate change hadn't been as severe as we feared so far. It's new. The fascinating thing about climate change is that it's an excuse for doing nothing. You know, if it's all those goddamn gringos in the north that, that made things bad, then, then I don't have to do my job. I don't have to regulate fishing. I don't have to tell the hotel people they can't build a hotel right smack on the shore or that they don't need a golf course with all that fertilizer, you know, in a tiny little spot. The coolest thing we found was that, that the places that were protected from overfishing and, and and sort of runaway coastal development were a lot more resilient to climate change. This is the most detailed, careful study of its kind that's ever been done. I mean, with these 35,000 surveys and data from 1970 to the present, practically every place in the Caribbean is covered. We've got more data than even the Australians have for the Great Barrier Reef. I mean, it's just incredibly good stuff. 
And you know, when we had that big meeting in Belize at the International Coral Reef Initiative meeting, and I gave the results of the report, and they completely got it. And they even passed a resolution uh, calling for all governments in the Caribbean to get rid of fish traps and stop killing parrotfish and, and doing the right thing. The managers really get it. But the, the power people and the politicians and whatever, they don't really get it yet because they're getting screamed at by, by all these special interests. And that's why actually your report makes, makes a big difference to me because it's real examples with real, as you like to emphasize, real data, lots of data. And so people can't say, oh, you're just thinking wishfully, it's just this rosy future that has no chance of happening. Your report shows that there's a real chance of happening if we actually take the steps that need to be taken. It's what makes it possible for me to go out in front of people and say, if we do something, it will turn things around, it'll make a difference. And, and the data are a critical part of being able to stand up there and say that with conviction. That want to be part of the process. It's true, I mean, Bermuda is, is really a model for how to do things. They banned fish traps something like 30 years ago. The flower garden banks, uh, and of all places, the Gulf of Mexico, surrounded by oil rigs there in really good shape, but that's because nobody's figured out how to build a hotel out there, and so they're really far away, and, and Bonaire is really good. We just don't seem to be able to get these very, very simple messages across. Like when you don't kill fish, there'll be more of them. And then they can do the, the good things for the ecosystem they're supposed to do. So what's missing? Why can't we make this work in the, in the Caribbean? You know, sometimes things look hopeless and you say nobody gets it. And then suddenly everyone seems to get it. Yeah, well, they better get it because we've got maybe 10 or 20 years and if we don't, the reefs of the Caribbean are going to be toast and we're not going to have anybody to blame for it but ourselves. You know, it's really important. The stakes are pretty high. Reefs uh, protect people against big waves. They feed people. They give them jobs through tourism. And in some cases, they even provide medicine to help keep people healthy. So there's an awful lot going on here with a decline of coral reefs that is well beyond the reefs themselves. It's the future welfare of people.